Once you gain access to CQ Researcher from the library's website, you'll see that you have several options to conduct your search. One of the first options you see is a search box here. It says search within CQ Researcher. And this is what most people will end up doing. They'll just put their subject into the search box and hit enter and it will search or hit this little uh, search icon and it will do a search for you. If you want a little bit more control over your search, you can always select the advanced search. The advanced search will provide you with multiple boxes you can search in. You can always add additional ones and you can tell it where to search by keywords or within the abstract, within the title, etc. So this is a way that you can get a little bit more control over your search. Uh, but again, most students will end up just searching for their topic straight away just to see if anything's there. If you're browsing within CQ Researcher, you'll notice that over here to the right, there are some featured reports. There are things on newly released, such as ransomware attacks, with Russian war crimes, barriers to home ownership. These are things within the news, really, that uh, CQ Researcher or CQ Press, as a publisher of, of CQ Researcher, what they do is they select topics that are in the news and they do a report on them. And that's what this collection of resources is. It's a collection of reports. If you scroll down, you'll see there are various topics. Now the website was redesigned so that it's mobile friendly. You'll see these large icons and they'll uh, kind of change within. If you have a mobile device, you'll maybe see one or two of these per row. In this case, we're seeing quite a few next to each other, but they'll all move depending on how the browser is uh, formatted. You'll see law and justice, media, religion, lots of very broad topics that you can click into. For instance, if we select science and technology, you'll see a whole list of topics related to science and technology, and you can browse through those. If you're it's particularly helpful, if you're looking for a subtopic or some sort of thing to do a report on or write a speech or get started on a, an essay, um, for instance, within um, this particular subset, we have professional video gaming, future of telemedicine, safe drinking water. What it will do is it'll tell you the title and then it'll give the original publication date. So in this case, this is in 2023. This is all uh, recent information, modern way of death, 2023, real uplifting topics like that, forever chemicals. And you can go into those reports and let's just take an example and look at it more closely. If I look at forever chemicals, what I'm seeing in this report is it's really addressing this central question. Can PFAS be eliminated from the environment? And you see the author tells you what type of continent it is. It's a report, tells you when it was originally published, March 17th of 2023. And then what you're going to see is an introduction. There will be a current situation, a pro-con section that deals with what are the positives and negatives of this PFAS, uh, which is here defined as uh, per and polyfluoroalkaline substances. It's a long word. That's why they abbreviate it. Uh, what you'll also see is if you keep scrolling down is the full length of this particular report. So not to make you dizzy, but I'm going to scroll down so you have a sense of just how lengthy this report is. It's made up of several different parts. It has a bibliography is associated with this. It'll have links to some resources that they're um, referencing. They'll talk about the background of it. It'll give you a chronology of major events. It's a really lengthy, uh, unbiased report meant to simply inform you of this particular topic. It's really great as a starting point for research. You can get the link here with these little icons that will help you be able to reference this back. So if you want to get the link and email it to yourself, or if you want to you have to post it in a canvas shell or something, that's a great way to do it. You can also see that you can cite this information. It will default to APA, but you can also select other versions such as MLA. It will take that particular format. You can copy it to a clipboard, which means it's just copied it like you would normally copy anything in Word, and then you could paste it into your uh, Word document, into Canvas, or wherever you need to provide that citation. Um, the other things to keep in mind is when you go, let's go back home, we will come to this main search page. If I want to, and rather than just browsing through large topics, if I want to search for a particular topic, I might want to put in something that is uh, fairly recent. Let's look, let's look up artificial intelligence as a topic. Let's say I want to write something about that. What it will do is give me a list of reports. It will Again, show me the date, so you have to pay attention to that. That's one of the ways you evaluate the uh, results is by looking at the date. You can 
typically sort these. You can say, well, these are by most relevant, but I really want the most recent because I'm, I really don't want anything from 10 or 20 years ago. That wouldn't really make sense for artificial intelligence unless I'm really wanting to get back into uh, this history of this particular topic. It will overlap with a lot of other topics. That's why when you get rid of the uh, relevance, you might find that you have to scroll down a little bit. So let's look at this artificial intelligence and intellectual properties from 2003. And again, you would just go right into that particular report. That is generally an overview of CQ Researcher. The only other thing to mention is that in addition to citing it or getting the link, you can also download a PDF of this particular uh, report. It, it was, it may still be available in a print version that they send to libraries. And we used to get it in print before we converted to the online version of it. You can also embed this into, it gives you an embed code you can put into Canvas, for instance. But typically you're going to download it or you're going to cite it or get the link. Those are the